Hi there, this is Jason Dunn from Zoom Thoughts. I'm going to walk you through the software installation procedure. Now the computer we're looking at here was what I had my previous Zoom on, so it has the current generation of Zoom software. I'm curious what the install experience is going to be like for uh, an existing user, whether or not it will uninstall the old software, etc. So, um, Microsoft gave me a DVD, so I'm actually going to, uh, or rather a CD, I'm going to run the software off the CD. Normally, of course, you would just go to the Zoom website, and from there you would actually download the installer. So this is the installer here. I'll just zoom in a little bit. This is a, uh, so you can see how here it says pre-release software licensing terms. So the final software will, of course, be released on November the 13th, if all goes according to plan. So I'll click on Accept. Uh, it says that the Zoom software is ready to install. Make sure your Zoom is not connected to your computer and click install. So I'll click install. Now uh, it says it's going to check for updates, preparing your computer, and installing the Zoom software. So I have a little progress bar down here. Uh, and it says it's installing the software. Now it hasn't prompted me to uninstall the old software. So that may mean that the two pieces of software can coexist side by side that would be a little bit strange of course so what may be happening is that it's just going to simply uh, replace the old software on my computer without prompting me which is actually probably the best user experience because of course you don't uh, you don't want to always tell users that they have to uninstall software that can be a little bit confusing and daunting for some people so we're just going to let this install and we'll come back when it's done Okay, so it hit 100% uh, finished quite quickly. It was under 60 seconds. Uh, the computer I'm installing this on is an AMD Athlon 5000 plus, 2 gigs of RAM. So it's a, it's a decent computer, but not anything uh, earth shattering. But there is, however, uh, a Windows security prompt. So we will click install. So I'm not sure if, they if that's an actual installation or maybe just some sort of a decompression routine for the software. So that might be a little bit misleading. Um, and at the moment, I'm just sort of sitting here waiting for the computer to tell me what it's doing, because uh, of course it says it's 100%, but, um, ah, so actually if we look up in the top left-hand corner here, we can see that there's a, uh, a zoom icon. My camera's having a hard time focusing on that, but there's a zoom icon, so that, that part seems to be ready to go. And the software still says it is at 100%. Kind of a pet peeve of mine. I don't like it when software isn't accurate about what it's doing you know so uh, a casual user may actually want to click cancel here because it's not sure what to do okay now that's interesting it's now gone down to three <laughs> so if you saw that it went from three percent to two percent to back to a hundred percent back to two percent and now it's actually finished that's kind of bizarre uh, hopefully Microsoft can uh, polish that up but we will now click uh, launch and we will see what happens here. I'll go a little bit wider so we can see more of the screen. So I clicked launch and I'm just kind of waiting for something to happen here. I can hear the hard drive grinding away. So this may be some sort of an initial load. Okay, not too impressed. So. I'm going to just double click on the shortcut. That's, I think, what an average user would probably do. Well, that's kind of a cool little uh, intro. So, um, up in the top here, it says uh, it gives you two choices. Uh, go right to my collection. It says start me off with the default settings. I'll change them later if I want to. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. So you basically have two choices. Go right to your collection, uh, and what it says is add all media to my default Windows folders for music, video, and pictures. Okay, so what we have here is an error saying Zune was unable to start. Make sure it's not already open. So what happened there was the shortcut that I ran started out the software, but there was a process in the background that was trying to start up the software on its own, but I got impatient, like I think an average user would. So that's, that's a bit of a sloppy experience. Uh, not always what, what you want to see. So I'm, I clicked OK to get rid of that. I'm going to um, I'm going to shut the Zoom program down again here. And then I'm just going to... Oh, Microsoft Zoom has stopped working. So now it's actually giving me an error prompt. Uh, and it's... Yeah, so basically it crashed. Well, that kind of sucks. So we'll click Send Information. Yes, I will send information. I'll close the program and then I'm going to double click and we'll try to start it up here again and see if we have better luck. 
All right, so here is the initial prompt again. Go to my collection or customize settings first. Um, I'm gonna customize settings because I'm a bit more of a power user, so we'll click on that. And what we have here is the monitored folders. So uh, what we're looking at here is the um, monitored folders. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and let you kind of take a peek. Essentially what it's doing is it's uh, asking me uh, which folders that I want to uh, monitor. So this is actually kind of a power user's dream because what it allows me to do here is specify uh, exactly which types of uh, folders, or rather which folders I want to monitor for music, uh, for video, uh, pictures, podcasts, and then um, there's an option here that says automatically update album art and media information. And uh, up in the top corner here, there's an option for uh, file types. So I'm going to just click on that and um, nothing appears to be happening. Oh, I see. So there's actually a next option down in the lower right hand corner. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to uh, specify where my music is, which happens to be in a uh, public folder. Um, it's kind of bizarre that it includes pictures under music, so I guess I'm going to just remove that. And then under pictures, um, I'm going to remove all the places where my pictures are not, which includes all the music folders. And um, podcasts. So it's kind of bizarre. It, it basically adds in a huge variety of um, lo locations. Um, so I guess I'm just going to kind of leave the uh, maybe the default here. Uh, looks like the default folder location for podcasts is um, the username slash music slash Zune slash podcast. So basically the Zune folder inside the music folder and then podcast underneath that. And as far as uh, videos go, again, I have to remove pictures and music. I'm not too sure why that is. Um, I'm actually going to uncheck the box down at the bottom here uh, that talks about um, automatically updating album art and media information. The reason why I'm going to uncheck that is that I have my album art embedded in my metadata is very carefully arranged so I actually don't really want the Zoom software to uh, mess around with that. Now next up here we're looking at the uh, the file types. So uh, the file types which one associate with the default player. So we have uh, M3U which is an mp3 playlist and then uh, it is going to be the default for MPEG-4 audio, uh, bookmarkable file, uh, video file, regular MP3s, MPEG-4 audio. Um, interestingly enough, WMA and WMB are not selected, which I think isn't a bad thing. I think a lot of users are probably more interested in using Windows Media Player as their uh, player for WMA and WMV. So I'm just going to click on Next. And then this is a uh, customer experience program where it's essentially just asking me if I want to allow Microsoft to uh, collect anonymous information. So I'm going to click finish and then I'm